I know I've met with God this morning. I hope you do. I've been in the presence of God because you bring the presence of God in your worship. That's why it's good to meet together. That's why it's good to be together. I've been missing for a few weeks. It's just great being amongst you. It really is. You bring the very presence of Jesus Christ. So bless you. And thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for your contribution. Just hearing the singing, sensing your love for Jesus is just wonderful. <clears throat> oh, I should have a... Oh, what have I done with a clicker? Oh, I've got it here, Dave. It's all right. I'm hiding it. <clears throat> Those that don't know me, I'm John. I'm just John, and you'll soon get used to me. Um, <laughs> I, we all have our own individual ways, and I've certainly got mine. <laughs> um, but welcome to you. So good to see you. I see one or two new faces. I, I have to say hello um, probably uh, uh, later on. Okay, so we're continuing our series with the Sermon on the Mount. Um, Dave called it the sermon, and um, this week we're looking at a passage in Luke, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find, knock, and the door will be opened. So, so I say to you, this is what Jesus said, it wasn't just anyone, so Jesus says this, I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for a, an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? <clears throat> so the passage, I mean, this whole section is about prayer. And the disciples ask right in the very beginning of chapter 11 and verse 1, you know, Jesus teaches to pray. One of the disciples teaches to pray like, like um, John's disciples taught, taught um, them to pray. Now, why did they ask? Prayer was not a new thing for them. It was part of their Jewish way of life. I think they recognized something in the way that Jesus prayed that was totally different to the way that they themselves or their religious leaders prayed. I think Jesus prayed in such a way there was no doubt he had a relationship with Almighty God. It was real. It was from the heart. It was personal and at times emotional. It was powerful. And as a result of praying, things changed. Things happened. Luke 11, verses 1 to 4, as we look at that, that's all about the Lord's Prayer. Then we go on from verse 5 to 8, and Jesus gives a parable about the persistent widow, you know, being persistent, not giving up. And so this whole section is all about prayer. And the section that we're looking at from verse 9 this morning, the first thing that Jesus says is, Ask. Now, <clears throat> some people may say, if God is sovereign, if he has determined certain things for me, if he knows what I need, why do I need to ask? I believe he'll look after me. So what's the point in praying? What's the point in asking? Well, let me take that thought just a little further. It also says in Scripture, God knows the days 
of my life. How long I'm going to live for. So if God knows that and God is sovereign, if he's determined that, why do I need to eat? You say, don't be stupid, John. Of course you need to eat. Well, with all due respect, don't be stupid. You need to pray. <laughs> prayer, I believe prayer is to the soul what food is to the body. It gives nourishment, gives strength, vitality, an overall sense of well-being. Prayer is a vital part of developing our relationship with Almighty God. Here's a familiar passage for you. Jeremiah chapter 29. <clears throat> for I know, says God, the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God says, I know I have a plan for your life. God says, I have a plan for your life. I have a plan for your life. I have a plan for your life. I've got a plan for your life. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. That's what God says. You want hope? God says, plans to give you hope and a future. So many people I meet lack hope and lack any sense of any reasonable future. God says, I have a plan for you. I have a plan to give you hope. A plan for a future. And this is it. Because God knows. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me. God wants us to pray to him. God wants us to talk to him. He wants us to talk to him about the plans he has for us. He wants to talk to him about our future, about any hope that we have. God wants us to communicate with him. And God says, and I will listen to you. I can remember as a child, I was one of um, seven children in our home, mum and dad, so it's, it's quite noisy at times. Very rarely quiet. Well, sometimes between two and four in the morning, maybe. So, and so there'd always be someone make it, talking somewhere. And sometimes mum would have to say, just, just, just be quiet a moment. But no, God says, I will listen to you. Believe that. Your prayers doesn't just vanish into thin air. God says, I, me, almighty God, will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Okay, Isaiah chapter 65 Verse 24, before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Paul writes in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 7, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. The Apostle Paul had such a deep, such a real relationship with God. He was desperate that other Christians should have the same intimate, meaningful, powerful relationship that he had in knowing God. When I pray, I get to know God. The person who does not pray will never get to know God. I'll say it again. When I pray, I get to know God more and more and more and more. And when I know God, I know I can trust him. Amen. Anyone says to me, I don't know I can trust God, I think, you don't know God. And you don't know God because you don't pray. When I pray, I get to know God. When I know God, I know, I know, I know I can trust him. Whatever happens. And we have some bad stuff happen. And through it all, we can trust God. 
So because I trust him, I will pray with faith. I will pray in faith, knowing that God will answer. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 6 says, at the end of verse 6, I am the Lord their God and I will answer them. Now then, is prayer conditional? I think it is. Ooh. Okay. Jesus said in John chapter 21, if you believe you'll receive whatever you ask for in prayer. James chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you do ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Wrong motives. You got another one? James chapter 5. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Right, righteous. Not someone who's perfect. You're righteous in Jesus Christ. You've got no righteousness of your own. So one who's righteous is a Christian. Someone who knows God. Another one, John chapter 5, verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that we, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. According to his will. Things such as people come to love Jesus. People come to know God. People are saved. They're healed. Things like justice. We know they're the things which are in the will of God. John chapter 14, verse 13. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. So another one is that God is glorified, not me. John chapter 15, verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. Remaining in, an ongoing good, close relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, John chapter 15 and verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Fruit, having an impact, making a difference in your family, in society, in your place of work or school. Just being who you are as a Christian wherever you go. Don't have to try much harder than that. Opportunity, other opportunities will come about. Just be you wherever you go. So, believe, wrong motives, righteous. Is it God's will? God is glorified, not you and me. Remaining in Jesus and fruit. These are just some of the possible reasons why prayers are not answered. But I don't want us to dwell on these or use these as some sort of checklist. In a nutshell, what we need to focus on is, am I being led by the Holy Spirit? Am I in step with the Holy Spirit today, here, and now and if not then jolly well let's get back on track let's be led by the Holy Spirit see if I ask if I invite the Holy Spirit to be with me today then when I pray I will pray believing God will answer when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit I'm going to be not going to be praying with wrong motives. 
when the Holy Spirit is living within me, I'm going to be living a righteous life. When I'm led by the Holy Spirit, I can be confident I'm praying in the will of God. When I'm led by the Holy Spirit, God will always be glorified. When I'm led by the Holy Spirit, I will remain in Jesus. When I'm led by the Holy Spirit, there's going to be fruit. So, no problem. Our biggest need is the Holy Spirit's presence with me day in and day out and throughout the day. That's my biggest need. So we'll ask and we'll expect to receive. Seek and you will find. Now to seek means to search, to look around for, to strive for, um, to go in search of, to seek out, to try and find or discover by searching, searching or questioning, to look for in earnest or with intent. Moses uh, gave instruction to the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse Verse 29. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you look for him with all your heart and your soul. King David says in Psalm 34, verse 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me. Now we heard a testimony this morning about seeking God. I just, God, I need to know. Is this right? So sometimes we ask for things, sometimes we seek for things. We're looking for an answer. We're looking for help. We're looking for guidance. Um, and that's great. <laughs> Jeremiah 29. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Uh, this, this phrase just keeps coming up. God, I really, really need to know. It's not just thrown out. Oh, well, it might happen. It might. No, no, I'm really seeking God here. King David speaking to his son Solomon about God. He says um, in chapter uh, 1 Chronicles 28 and verse 9, if you seek him, he will be found by you. We an answer. Praise on Sunday during the week, an answer found by God. Knowing that prayer is answered. When I'm seeking God, I need to be aware and prepare. Seeking can take time, perseverance, patience, diligence, concentration, quite a lot of things at times but I'm really looking for something I'm looking for an answer I need to know I don't want any other distractions coming in I don't want to get any wrong messages and we can believe when we're asking God God will answer us he's not, gonna, he's not a God of confusion never has been, never will be God will direct our paths if we ask we have a, a, a fantastic... I love the story of Gideon. Um, and in Judges chapter 6, verses 36 to 40, we hear of Gideon, and Gideon knows um, God has spoke to him and said, look, I'm going to use you, Gideon. Uh, and he said, well, I can't, I'm the least in the family, and my family's the least in the clan. And the clan's uh, Basically saying, I'm a no-one God. And God said, I know that. To me, you are. Um, and uh, God, says, God says, I'm going to use you to save the whole nation, basically. And Gideon says, oh, right. And, and uh, goes away and then comes back and thinks, I really need to know I've heard from God on this. So he gets a fleece, puts it out of the night time, and basically says to God, God, I'm doing this in faith. Um, I'm going to bed now. When I get up in the morning, if the fleece is wet and the, and the ground all around it is dry, I know you're with me. Gets up in the morning, the fleece is wet, all the ground around him is dry. Brilliant! And he thinks, ah. 
tell you what, I've just got to be absolutely certain here. God, I'm going to bed tonight and in the morning I'm going to put the fleece out again. Now then, if the fleece is dry and all around it is wet, then I know, I know I've, the guy's seeking God. He really wants to know. All right? And God answers. And we know the story of Gideon. Wonderful. 300 men defeats a whole army because it wasn't him, it was God. Not by power nor by might, but by spirit. Yeah? Wonderful. Yeah? Not how many men you've got. In, um, in Joshua, chapter 7 and verse 6, we hear about the battle of Ai. And Joshua knows God is with him. Uh, and they send out a, a party head. There's these, all these nations they want to take over. And uh, guys come back, oh, you don't need to send the whole army, Joshua, just 2,000, maybe 3,000 men, that'd be enough. Don't disturb the whole, you know, no problem. And um, anyway, in a nutshell, they get defeated. Some of the men have died, have died. And Joshua seeks God for an answer. Why has this happened? And Joshua wore his clothes and fell on his face downwards to the ground before the Ark of the Covenant, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel came and sprinkled dust on their heads. They had to find out why. They were seeking God. Joshua was distraught, tearing his clothes down on the ground before the Ark of the Covenant stays there. We don't know how long, but till the evening. That's all we know. He's there for some time. And the other elders come and join him. They start sort of putting dust all over themselves as well. They were seeking God. They wanted to know the answer. And God told them the answer. Because someone had been put some of the um, sacred things, had, had nicked them and put them put to one side. Anyway, so they're seeking God. Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 4. We read, he hears about the state of uh, Jerusalem. He said, when I heard these things... I sat down and wept. It's deeply affected. I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. This guy is seeking God. I've known occasion myself when I've needed to know certain things. So I found fasting rather helpful when Terry Virgo was leading the um, um, organization New Frontiers we as elders we would meet uh, two three times a year probably twice or three times usually used to go to Stonely and would have a couple of days of prayer and fasting so I mean man you get praying with some of these guys it's brilliant but we fasted and that we always prayed during what would normally be meal times. We had the breaks at other times, but say, I don't know, between 12 and 2, lunchtime, would always be at prayer. Of an evening, between 5 and 7, always be at prayer. The other breaks. But, you know, when we, fa we knew we'd met with God. If you haven't fasted, you can. Just try it. Um, I found it really helpful at times. But when you're seeking God, it takes time, it takes effort, uh, whatever is right for you. I used to want to go somewhere quiet. I didn't want to be disturbed. So no phone, no nothing, just away. It might be just for an hour, two hours, it could be a day, whatever is right for you. Just get it right. But it's wonderful. And seeking, there's nothing like it when you know, you know, you're seeking God for, for whatever and you know you've met with him. There's nothing more thrilling, I think. Okay. Esther fasted three days before she approached the king and the whole nation was saved. So, set aside time to seek God. Knock and the door will be opened. In a word, Pray until you get the answer. Pray and do not 
give up. Pray with intent. Genesis uh, uh, chapter 18, we hear how Abraham intercedes for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and calls to God, God, surely if there's just 50 righteous people, that you're not going to destroy this whole city for the sake of 50 people. Then he says, well, well, and God said, no, I won't do that. And he said, well, for 45. And he says, to four, and, and gradually, he says, for the sake of 10. And God says, for the sake of 10, I won't. And we know, well, there wasn't even 10 people. But anyway, but Abraham prayed, he interceded. He, he was banging on the door. God, God. I know I used to have a, we used to have a phrase, you know, um, banging on the gates of heaven. Uh, we used to pray until we'd reach what we, I used to call a phrase, breakthrough. You know, you know God has heard. You know it. You know that God has heard you. Pray until there's breakthrough. Elijah prayed for rain uh, in uh, 1 Kings in chapter 18. And we see that you know, he prayed and it goes back and it seven times and he sends his servant up. Go up in the mountain, just see if there's a cloud. Tell me what you said. No, there's nothing. Back on his knees, pray. What? Nothing. Back on his knees, seven. We don't know how long it took. But well, why did he need to see a cloud? He needed to see it. That was his answer. Tiny cloud, as, as, as big as a man's fist, I think the word is. And then Elijah says, come on, let's get going. And runs like a marathon, run down the hill. There's only a cloud. No, no, this is going to be poured down. Prays until he gets the answer. Um, then in Luke, chapter 11, we've already mentioned that about the persistent widow. Not giving up. Pray and do not give up. Thessalonians, we're told, pray without ceasing. Just keep on and keep on. I can remember some years ago, I lived in Bracknell, and um, uh, somehow I was introduced to this uh, elderly couple, um, Bill and Lil, and Bill was physically disabled. And someone asked if I could just do a couple of jobs, just uh, a bit like a bit of decorating or something. So I just used to go around there and do odd jobs, and I got to know Bill and Lil. I got quite friendly with them. So I just kept on going around. I'd take them shopping or whatever else. They could just phone up. So things like, if the light bulb goes out, I don't want you getting up a stepladder or anything. Give me a shout. So just odd jobs. So nine years I'm going around. And I thought, Lord, and I've been praying and praying. Um, and it seemed like there's no difference in their lives whatsoever. Then one day, one day, they gave their lives to Jesus. Nine years. Do you think, oh man, yeah, I'll sweep the leaves up. Yeah, I'll clean this. Yeah, I'll. Oh, God, oh, I want to know. I just want, I need to know they're born again. I want them to know of your love before they die. Please, oh God. Nine years. And they came to Christ. My own mum. My mum was a Christian. My dad wasn't. Uh, it was never a problem in the home, really wasn't. So uh, um, uh, my dad encouraged us youngsters to get to Sunday school and go to church because that's what my mum would like. So my dad supported him that. He didn't go. He used to go occasionally, but he wasn't a believer. My mum prayed for him nearly 40 years. Why did he have to wait? I don't know. don't know why it took so long. But he came to Christ before he died. Wonderful. We had many years just talking about Jesus. Oh, wonderful times. Brilliant. 40 years nearly. Don't give up. Whoever you're praying for, whatever situation you're praying for, do not give up. You're praying to a God who says, I will hear, I will answer you. So, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I'm going to finish there, but I say, just pray for the presence of God. Your biggest need is the Holy Spirit, day in, day out, moment by moment. Ask the Holy Spirit 
to fill you again. And the next day, to fill you again. And the next day, to fill you again. To be with you again. To lead you, to guide you, to watch over you. To direct your paths. Father, oh, and one of the prayers which gets me deeply is in John. uh, And you've got a whole section from John chapter 14 through to 16, 17. But in John chapter um, uh, uh, 16 and 17, where Jesus is praying for himself before he goes to the cross, and then he prays for us. Read that afresh. I mean, man. Oh, God, that they may be one as we are one. Oh, God. It's just lovely. Dwell on some of those things. Holy Spirit, we ask you even now, will you come upon us? We thank you for our time together this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us worship Jesus. We came, wanted to worship, and you answered our prayer. Our soul is refreshed. Our soul is revived. Our soul, our inner being, feels at peace with God because of you so remain with us now remain with us for the rest of this day I pray Holy Spirit every one of us would know of your presence this week you know what lies ahead we think we do but you know what lies ahead you know the people we're going to meet may we be a blessing to everyone that we come into contact this week God, just watch over us. Guard our hearts, our minds, so that we bring glory to Jesus. Amen.